what we learned for chapter six is uh, polynomials. So I'll introduce what is polynomial in a second, and the basic skills for this chapter will be factorized. Okay, so I'll tell you at the beginning, all the 20 pages of the notes will be uh, factorizing the polynomials. Okay, we need to factorize both polynomial, we need to solve the polynomial, and we need to sketch the polynomial. So it's all about factorizing. Okay, before we can solve, before we can sketch, we need to factorize polynomials. So the whole chapter is about how we factorize things. Okay, how we factorize things. And I think you learned this chapter, half of this chapter at least in year 10, which is uh, use long division. I hope you still can remember that, but I won't use long division a lot. I will introduce another method to replace long division because I don't like long division. I think it's just so easy to make mistakes and it's hard to do. So I'll introduce another way, but you need to know how to use long division for some particular type. Okay, so I'll go through all these kind of things uh, when we reach the point. Okay, so it's about 20 pages, this is about 18 page. So First of all, it's like introduce the language of polynomial. So what is a polynomial? A polynomial is an algebraic uh, expression often written as px. So when you see px, it's basically talk about a polynomial. So that contains, okay, three key points. Okay, it contains what? It contains non-negative, that's the first requirement. Whole number, that's the second requirement. And powers, that's the third requirement. Okay, it actually is three things. It needs to be non-negative. It needs to be a whole number, and it needs to be the number needs to be a power. Okay, the number needs to be a power. So, I give you some of some of the examples below here. Okay, we have expression. This one, this one, this one. These are not polynomials. Okay, let's see why they are not polynomials. Okay, for the first one. Tell me one, two, three, which one is not satisfied for the first expression? One on x plus two x. Which one is not satisfied? Non-negative, whole number, and powers. Non-negative. Okay. X to the power of negative one. That one is x to the power of negative one. It's negative. Okay. It's a negative one. It's not a non-negative. So it's negative. So which is not good. Okay, for the second one, which one not not correct? Hmm? Which? What what's what's root square root? If I put that back into power form, what's that? Half. So which one is not satisfied? Whole numbers. Okay, fraction. That's a fraction power, which is not good. Okay, let's see number three. What's wrong with number three? Number three looks pretty much like quite good, but which one is not satisfied? What, which one? Three to the power of two X. Okay, that's not a num, like it's not a power written in number. Like your power contains variables, so it's not a polynomial. It's actually not satisfying number three. Why is not satisfying number three? Let's see, three to the power of x and x to the power of three. This one is called an exponential fraction, uh, expression function. Uh, this one is called a polynomial. Okay, students always confuse between those two. 3 to the power of x, x is a power. The variable is like, you have a variable power, then this is an exponential function. And x to the power of 3 is polynomial. Okay, you have x as space, but number as a power. So this is polynomial. So if you have variables in your power, doesn't matter you have whole number or not non-negative or like fraction power. It's not a polynomial, it's called exponential. Okay, it's called exponential. So those three are three like typical type which is not a polynomial. Okay, so in general, an expression px written in this form. Okay, px equals to okay x to the power of n times a coefficient, x to the power of n minus one times another coefficient. Uh, you can add that until you add x 
to the power of 1 times the coefficient and plus a constant. This a0 is called a constant. Okay, this a0 is called a constant. So you have, for example, 3x to the power of 4 plus 2x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus 2x plus one or plus a half. Okay, I just need the num uh, the power to be whole number. I don't really care about uh, the coefficient, and I don't really care about the last constant. So I just need to make sure the power is a non whole number. Okay, non negative whole number power. So let's have a look at all the language here. So what is coefficient? The coefficient is the number times together with, with, the, x, with the term, okay, term x to the power of n. Okay. Okay. So a0, a1, a2, a3, a, like they're all coefficient. So there's a very special one, okay, px equals to zero. That's still a function. px equals to zero is still a function, but it's not change with the x, okay, it's not changed with the x because x change this equation always equals to zero. But this is called a zero polynomial, okay? It's called a zero polynomial. It never changed, but it's just it's called a polynomial. Uh, it's called a zero polynomial, okay? Zero polynomial only say px equals to zero, only that one. So leading terms are a n times x to the power of n, okay? What is leading term? Leading term is the term of the highest index among those terms with a non-zero coefficient. So which one got the highest power? Which one is the leading term? Okay, which one is the leading term? Okay, degree of polynomial. So what is degree of polynomial? Okay, you have a long polynomial and you will talk about the degree of polynomial. The degree of the polynomial is the index n of the leading term. Okay, it's the index n of the leading term. So if say the leading term, say if the leading term is uh, 3x to the power of 5, then the degree of this polynomial will be 5. Okay, the degree of the polynomial will be 5. Degree is 5, which is the highest power. Okay, so what is a monic polynomial? Okay, monic polynomial is the leading term has coefficient of 1. I don't care about other terms. But the leading term got coefficient of 1. For example, x to the power of 4 plus 2x to the power of 3 plus 1. Okay, that is a monic polynomial because the leading term is x to the power of 4. Okay, the leading term is x to the power of 4. And the coefficient is 1. There's no coefficient in the front. So that is a monic polynomial. Okay, the whole thing is a monic polynomial. Okay, constant term. So what is constant term? Constant term is the constant, like not changing with x. So it's a0, the last um, constant, okay, last number, which is a0. Okay, with index of 0. Why is that with index of 0? Because I can say that's a0 times x to the power of 0. x to the power of 0 is 1, so it's just a0. So I can say the index of that term is 0. Okay, the index of that term is 0. Okay, next one. Polynomial with two terms are called binomials. Uh, just a lot of definition, okay, here. Polynomials with two terms are called binomial. So what is polynomial with two terms? Let's say 2x to the power of 3 minus 1. That's a polynomial with two terms. So this is a binomial, okay, this is a binomial. I don't care what power I have. I don't care if I'm missing any terms in between. We have two terms, okay? 2x to the power of 3 and 1. Two terms, and that's a binomial. And we have trinomial as well, so which is the terms with three terms, okay? The polynomial with three terms. So x to the power of 2 plus 2x minus 1, that is called a trinomial, okay? That is called a trinomial. Three terms. Okay. The next one is called quadratic trinomial. So what is a quadratic trinomial? So this is a quadratic with highest power, which is 2. Okay, x to the power of 2. So it's a quadratic. And how many terms are there? Three terms. So it's called a quadratic trinomial. Okay, it's a quadratic trinomial. And we have 3x to the power of 2 minus 1. That's a quadratic as well, but it only has two terms. So that's a binomial. So it's a quadratic binomial. Okay, it's a quadratic binomial.
Okay, so let's finish this table. The terms of polynomial are best placed in order from the largest to the smallest power of x. Okay, uh, in order, put them in order because it's easier to do factorizing, it's easy to do long division, it's easy to do a lot of things. So put that in order. It's not wrong if you're not putting them in order, but it's just very hard for yourself to work on questions. Okay, let's finish this table. So for this one, it's still a polynomial even though there's no x term involved. I can say that's x to the power of n, uh, zero, x to the power of zero. So that's a constant term, only got a constant term, but I can say it's x to the power of zero. It's still a polynomial, okay, even though it's a constant polynomial. Okay, it's a constant polynomial because this polynomial only contains constant. So what's the name called of, uh, what's the name of this polynomial? It's called a constant polynomial. So what's the degree? The degree is zero. What's the coefficient of x, which is negative 2.3? Hmm? Okay, still, it's still times with x to the power of zero. Okay, still times with x to the power of zero. And what's the constant? The constant is still negative 2.3. Okay, the constant is still negative 2.3. Okay, linear, linear. So what is a linear? Linear is x to the power of one. The highest term was x to the power of one. So that is a linear. So what is the degree? The degree will be one. So x to the power of one is the highest uh, term. What's the coefficient? The coefficient is negative 0 0.1. Uh, wait, 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 wait. This one, this one is wrong, this one is wrong. I haven't really looked at it clearly. So it's the coefficient of x. Okay, coefficient of x is x to the power of 1. So that one should be 0. That one should be 0. Okay, that's x to the power of 0. So this one's x is here. So the coefficient of x is negative 0 0.1. And the constant is 1. Okay, the constant is 1. Okay, the next one, the next one is a quadratic as well, a quadratic, so x to the power of 2 is the highest power. So what's the coefficient, uh, what's the degree? The degree will be 2. The leading term is 5x to the power of 2 over 8. So the leading term is this, so power is 2. So what's the coefficient of x term? x is here, so the coefficient is negative a. Okay, the coefficient is negative a. And the constant is zero. There's no constant. There's no constant. Okay, this, I can call this a linear binomial. I can call this a quadratic binomial. Okay, the next one. The next one is a cubic because that's the leading term. Okay, that's the leading term. That's a cubic because x to the power of three. I just I say that's degree of three, but the name is a cubic. That's a cubic function and has three as the degree. And what's the coefficient of x? The coefficient of x is zero. There's no x term, so the coefficient of x is zero. And what's the constant? The constant is three negative three on two. Okay, the constant is negative 3 on 2. And this one is a cubic trinomial. Okay, that's a cubic trinomial. So three terms and it's a cubic. So it's a cubic trinomial. Next one, next one is a quartic. Why is a quartic? Because the highest term, highest co uh, power term is here. Okay, x to the power of four. So the degree is four and it's a quartic. What's the coefficient of x? Is one. X is here, the coefficient is one. And what's the constant? The constant is zero. There's no constant term. And this is called a quartic trinomial. Okay, this can be a quartic trinomial because three terms and it's a quartic. Okay, quartic trinomial.
Okay, so this is like leading term is here, and the degree is five. So is there a special name for that? We don't really give this a special name after power four. So we will say this one. The name of this one will be polynomial of degree of five. It's polynomial of degree of five. Okay, you just talk about that's a polynomial and that's a degree of five. Okay, so polynomial of degree of five. So when you talk about that, you know that's a polynomial of power five. So what's the coefficient of x? So it's negative three, so x is here. What's the constant? The constant will be zero. There's no constant term. And this is a binomial. That's a binomial. So. It's called a polynomial of degree of five binomial. Okay, so or we can say that's a binomial polynomial of degree of five. So it's a binomial because I only got two terms here. When I got four terms or one term, we don't really know what is it. And also, this is a monic polynomial. So what is monic? Monic is the leading term has coefficient of one. So that's a monic polynomial as well. Okay, it's monic. Because the leading term got coefficient of one. This one is not monic. This one is not monic because the leading term's coefficient is not one. This is not monic. Leading term coefficient is not one. This is not monic. Leading term not one. This is not monic. Okay, so they are not monic coefficient. Uh, polynomial. Only the last one is. Okay, that's this table. And let's look at example one. Let's look at example one. For example one, we have px equals x to the power of four minus x to the power of three minus two x squared plus a. So evaluate p zero. So evaluate p zero is change x to zero. Okay, change all the x to zero. So one, what is p zero? So p zero is zero, 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 and a. So p zero equals to a. So all the x is zero. So p zero is a. What is p one? P one is change all the x to one. So it's one to the power of four minus one to the power of three minus two times one to the power of two plus a. What is that? One minus one is zero. Minus two and it's a minus two. Okay, so p one is a minus two. So change all the x to one. Okay, change all the x to one. Okay, question number two. Okay, question number two. P two equals to three. Find the value of a. Okay, p two equals to three. Find the value of a. So what is p two first? So p2 is change all the x to 2. So it's 2 to the power of 4 minus 2 to the power of 3 minus 2 times 2 to the power of 2 plus a. That is 16 minus 2 to the power of 3 is 8 minus 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8 plus a. 16 minus 8 minus 8 is 0, so you're left with a. So p2 equals to a. And also p2 equals to 3. And also p2 equals to 3, which is given here. So a equals to 3. Okay, so a equals to 3. So p2 equals to that. P2 also equals to that. So those two must be the same. Then a equals to 3. Example two. Example two is you're adding two polynomials or you're subtract two polynomials or you're times two polynomials. Okay. So first of all, this, this is not hard. You just add them or times them and you find out the expression. But the thing is, what is the domain for when you plus those two functions? So the domain for f is negative four to three. The domain of g is negative two to five. 
which means you only have graph for f from negative 4 to 3. You only have graph for g from negative 2 to 5. When you add them, think about which part can really add together. Okay, I have graph from negative 2 to 5, and I have graph negative 4 to 3. You can add them when there are which this part has got two graphs together, okay? If you only have graph for F, you don't have graph for G, how you can add them? You can't add them. So you need to add them when the domain can apply to both equations, okay? When the domain can apply to both equations, otherwise you can't add them. For example, let's say we have a graph here, okay, from this point to this point, and you have a graph here, from this point to this point. Which two part you can add the graph? Which two part you can add the graph? It's only for uh, from here to here to here to here. You can only add them between these two values. Because in this part, I don't have the green graph. In this part, I don't have the green graph. How I can add them? I can't add them. There's nothing to add. So the domain must be the intersections between those two domains. And then that's the domain for the addition functions or subtraction of the functions or your times the two functions. So we first of all need to work out the domain. So if one domain is from net 4 to 3 and the other one, uh, let's say that's 3, that's 5 and negative 2. Okay, we have some value like that. And for the first one, I have negative 4 to 3, like this. For the next one, I have negative 2 to 5. And negative 2 can take it. 5, you can't take it. Open circle. Okay, negative 2 to 5. And where's the intersection? The intersection is the part you got two colors. So it's from negative 2 to 3. Okay, negative 2 to 3. So the domain for all of them needs to be from negative 2 to 3. Okay, from negative 2 to 3. Okay, when you add them, so you add So you add them together, right? You add this one and you add this one. So let's write things in order. So it's 3x to the power of 3. Okay, that term gone. And plus 2x to the power of 2. That term gone. And x term. 2 over 3x and 1 over 3x. You add them together. You're just left with 1x. You have 1x. So that two term gone. And think about the constant. You have x plus uh, 3 and minus 1. You have a plus 2. Okay, I have plus 2. So if you write in function notation, you say f plus g. Okay, f plus g. So the domain is negative 2 to 3 mapping to r, comma, fx plus gx dot dot uh, equals to 3x to of 3 plus 2x of 2 plus x plus 2. If you can write that into function notation, that will look like that. Because when you ask, when you be asked to find uh, a function, you need to talk about the rule and the domain. Okay, both things. You need to talk about the domain and also the rules. So it's not enough. You only give the first line because you also need to give the domain as well. Okay, so I'll write that into function notation. I'll write that into a function notation. Okay, let's say when we subtract that, we subtract, use gx to subtract fx. So I will say f g minus f. Okay, g minus f because it's gx subtract fx. So still, I need both graph to have like I uh, have both. A graph in this domain. So it will still be negative 2 to 3 mapping to R. And I'll use gx to subtract fx. Yeah, use gx to subtract fx. So gx is 
x to the power of 3 okay subtract 2x to the power of 2 okay that 2 gone and use 1 on x to subtract 2 on 3x so that will give you minus 1 on 3x okay use that one to subtract that one you have a minus a third x use the bottom last one to subtract the first one and you use the 3 to subtract the negative one use the 3 to subtract the negative one which gives you 4 so you have a plus 4 okay, you have a plus 4 if you can't see it directly you just write out both equations and go to open the bracket and rearrange the order okay so I can see it so I can do this way quickly okay the last one will be f times gx okay f times gx so you write fg okay write fg which means fx times gx you write fg so the domain is still negative 2 to 3 mapping to r and you work out what is when they times together okay so it's fx times gx equals to okay that will be a really long expression will be a really long expression so that will be 2x to the power of 2 plus 2 3x minus 1 times 3x to the power of 3 plus 1 on 3x plus 3 okay times those two together so you expand them so you have 6x to the power of 5 plus 2x to the power of 4 minus 3x to the power of 3 Okay, the next one is plus 2 on 3, x to the power of 3, plus 2 on 9, x to the power of 2, minus a third x. And plus 6x to the power of 2, plus 2x minus 3. So, we have x to the power of 3 term, I have x squared term, I have x term, the last one is constant term. So let's rewrite this here. So 6x to the power of 5 plus 2x to the power of 4. Let's see how many x cubed term we have. So 3 is not negative 9 on 3. So plus that is negative 7 on 3, x to the power of 3, x squared term. So 2 on 9 plus 9 on uh, 54 6 times 9 is 54 so it's 56 over 9 x squared and about x term x term is 2 minus a third 2 is 6 over 3 minus a third which is plus 5 over 3 x and then minus 3 in the end Okay, that's when you times them. Okay, that's when you times them. Okay, they uh, write all of them in function notation, and I need to talk about both domains and also the results. Okay, the function rules, the rules, domain and rules. When you have been asked for writing the function, you need to write the domain and the rule. Okay, domain and the rule. Alright, that is question two. Okay, that is example two. Okay, I have the thing in the box. Okay, I'll explain that. Because I, I think you don't understand what is this notation here. Okay, what is this notation here? Uh, use degree f to donate the degree of polynomial of f for f and g not equals to zero. Okay, so for example, I have fx equals to 3x3 plus 2x. So the degree deg of f equals to 3. So I talk about the degree of f. So it's just a notation. Okay, so what this bottom two lines means? The degree of function f plus function g will be smaller or equals to the maximum degree in between the function of f or the function of g. Okay, so what that means? 
It means when you add function f and g together, when you add function f and function g together, the degree of that result function will be no larger than the maximum domain, maximum degree of one of this function. Okay, say if we have, say, let's say this, if we have degree of f equals to 3 and degree of g equals to 2, the degree of f plus g will be smaller or equals to 3. Okay, will be smaller or equals to the largest one. Okay, why is not equals to the largest one? Why it will be smaller or equals to the largest one? Why it can be the smaller case? Anyone know the reason? If we add two functions together, why the degree can go down? Why is possibly to go down? Have a think about that. If I have my fx, equals to 3x plus 3 plus 2x plus 2 plus 1. And my gx equals to negative 3 to x plus 3 plus 2x to power 2x plus 2. Okay, think about when you add those two equations. What's the degree? They cancel. The power of 3 is canceled. Because 3x to power 3 and the negative 3x to power 3, when you add them, they just become a 0. So you lose the highest term, okay? You lose the leading term. You lose the leading term in both equations. So f plus g will give you for, uh, 2x plus 2 plus 2x plus 3. You don't have the x to the power of 3 term. So the power actually go down to degree of 2, not degree of 3, okay? Even though both functions got degree of 3, but when you add them, very occasionally, those two terms just be, have the negative coefficient, okay, the negative coefficient, and they canceled. And they canceled, you don't have that leading term. The leading term becomes the next highest power term, which is x to the power of 2. Then your degree actually reduced by 1, okay? Both degree of f and g is 3, but when you add them, the degree actually becomes 2. It's possibly to go down, okay, it's possibly to go down when you add them. Okay, why can cancel? Because the coefficient like that. Okay, because the coefficient like that. That's the coefficient, and the coefficient just be negative of each other. But when you times that, okay, when you times two functions, the degree of f and the degree of g will be added together. Okay, the degree of f and the degree of g will be added together. So the degree will actually increase for sure when you times two functions. Why? Because the coefficient will do nothing. You just add the powers. Okay, you just add the powers. When you times them, you add the powers. So the power must be go up. So if you have fx equals to x to the power of 2 plus 2x and gx equals to x to the power of 3 plus x, when you times them, those two terms times together must create x to the power of 5 for you. Doesn't matter what's the coefficient. Okay, that must create x to the power 5 for you. So it doesn't matter with the coefficient. So the degree for sure will be the addition between the two functions. Okay, the addition of two functions. Okay, when you add them, you can't predict the power. The power will go down or will remain the highest one for one of the function. But when you times that, the power will be for sure is the addition of the two degrees. Okay, it's the addition of the two degrees. Okay, so what's this two lines talking about? Okay, what's this two lines talking about? Say, if I have px and qx, okay, if I have px and qx, um, if px wants to be equivalent to qx, if and only if all the coefficient will be the same for the corresponding power term, okay? So if I x to the power of 3 and x to the power of 3 on both equation, uh, both function, then the coefficient must be the same for both terms. Okay, the coefficient must be the same for both terms. So in other words, if two polynomials wants to be equivalent, then it needs to be exactly the same. It needs to be exactly the same. Then let's look at example 3. Let's look at example 3. In example 3, in example 3, Okay, let's say the left-hand side is a coefficient with px. 
uh, with a polynomial of px and the right hand side is a polynomial of qx. Okay, I have px on the left and qx on the right. That's two coefficients, uh, two polynomials with different coefficients. Okay, for the first one, I have 9x to the power of 3, a minus 5x to the power of 2, that of x, and that is the, co uh, the constant term. Okay, that is the constant term. So I have four terms, but on the right hand side, I only have cx to the power of 3. I don't have x squared, I don't have x, I don't have x uh, constant. What that means? That means you add 0x squared, add 0x, and add 0. Okay, so all, all of that will be 0. So now both equations, both polynomials got four terms. Okay, both polynomials got four terms. And I want those two to be equivalent. Px needs to be equivalent to Qx. So what will happen is all the coefficients of the term needs to be the same. Okay, with the same power needs to be the same. So C9 needs to be equals to C. A minus 5 needs to be 0. 2b minus a needs to be 0. Minus 13 over 2 minus b plus c needs to be 0. Correct? All the coefficient of the same power term needs to be the same. Okay, so c needs to be 9 because they all have x to the power of 3. And then all the coefficient needs to be 0 because on your right hand side you don't have any coefficient. You don't have any x term or x squared term. Okay, so from this you will solve that c equals to 9. From this you will solve a equals to 5. From this you will solve b equals to 5 on 2. And now my question is, you already solve out a, b, c values. What do you do for the last one? You substitute for y, why we need to substitute. To check. Okay, substitute to check. Okay, so I'll say that's a check step. You must do that. It's not saying like I can do or I cannot do. You must do that. So how to check? The left hand side equals to negative one, uh, 13 on 2 minus 5 on 2 plus 9. That will be minus 18 on 2 plus 9. And that will be 0. And that equals to right hand side. So it's a tick, okay? Like successfully check that and it's satisfied. Then you will say A equals to five, B equals to five on two, C equals to nine. Okay, what happened if, what happened if is not true? The left hand side not equals to right hand side. What do you can say? What you will say? Like for this case, it's successfully we check it. Okay, which is true. And I can say A is that, B is that, C is that, there's no problem. How about if I have some checking and to tell me left hand side is not equal to right hand side? Is that still have those solutions or like you have different solutions? Okay, there will be no solutions in this case. Because you can't let the last constant to be zero. Okay, you can, you can never solve out a pair of solutions to make Px equals to Px. It's never true. Okay, it doesn't matter what your ABC value is. ABC value satisfy the first three terms, but those ABC values not supporting the last constant term. If the last constant term is not true, then the whole equation just can't be the same. Okay, Px cannot be Qx because the constant never become the same even though ABC term is already the same, but the last one never become the same. You fail the checking step and you will say there's no solutions to make those two equations to be the same. So checking step, it is important, okay? The checking step is important. You must do the checking step and the checking step must be true. If the checking step failed, you just say no solutions for this two equations to be the same. Okay, I cannot solve out any ABC values. It's not true. All right, okay. And I have put a red box here because we won't have class on Wednesday. So you need to memorize all of that. Uh, except this one, except this one.
Okay, except the middle one. I, I don't really require you to remember x to power, uh, to power 4. But, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, 7 equations you need to remember. And I think the first one, second one, there's no problem. That's perfect, like, uh, expanding uh, at a minus b square, a plus b square, there's no problem to expanding that. Okay, it's perfect square. And I think you have no problem with those two and you have no problem with a square minus b square equals to a plus b times a minus b. I don't think you have any problem with that. Okay, remember, a plus b, um, a square plus b square cannot be factorized. Okay, so that's why we have a we have a gap here. A square plus b square. You don't have any equations to factorize that. Okay, don't try. You can't. It's not true because a lot of my students like confused when they say a square plus b square. They still write a plus b times a minus b, which is not true. Okay, which is not true. You don't have a square plus b square to be factorized. You don't have a formula for that. And the thing I want you to remember it's those four okay it's those four don't mix with those two the top two is expanding okay the top two is expansion step which is expand and for the last two which is factorize okay there's nothing i want to explain to you you just need to memorize that Okay, expanding, I don't need to explain. You can expand them term by term. For factorize, okay, you need to remember those two because it's very helpful formula to help us to factorize in the further study, like the exercise COD. So, a cubed plus b cubed. Okay, you can't factorize a squared plus b squared, but you can factorize a cubed plus b cubed, which I can factorize in that way. And I can factorize a cubed minus b cubed as well, which is that equation. Okay, the sign which is quite confusing, you must remember it. Okay, you must remember it. If you have minus, you have minus in the front and you have all the plus later. If you have plus, you will have plus here, but you have minus in the middle, but still plus b squares. Okay, so the sign can be quite confusing. Remember them. Okay, remember them. You need those four equations. Okay, for example four, it's just expanding. I don't think we have any problem with that. So for this one, I'll have 25 plus c squared over 9 minus 10. Uh, okay, minus that is 10 times c over 3. So I will say it's 1 on 9 c squared minus 10 on 3 c plus 25. Okay, for this one will be a minus b cube. So it will be a cube minus three a squared b plus three a b squared minus that cube b cube. Okay, just use the equi uh, formula on the top. So you have. 8x to the power of 3 minus 6x okay that's uh, no 6 4 12x 4x squared divided by x is 12x times 3 is tw uh, 4x times 3 is 12x and plus okay that's a 6x on uh, x squared so 6 over x okay 6 over x minus 1 on x cubed minus 1 on x cubed Okay, I'll leave the next one for you to do it, and I'll do the last one. Last one, you can see that is a 5 minus 2b and 5 plus 2b case. So it's a minus b times a plus b. So that will equal to a squared minus b squared. 2b needs into the bracket, okay? a squared minus b squared. That is 25 minus 4b squared. Okay, 25 minus 4b squared. 